Uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, today's webinar, we're going through the Horner I.O. review. It is just under 25 minutes, and um, we'll go into a questions and answers then. Excuse me. Um, if you have any questions throughout, feel free to put them into the questions panel, and uh, we'll get them at the end. Okay, let's get started. Welcome to today's tutorial. Let's get started. Let's take a look at our agenda. We're going to review a variety of general industrial I.O. type topics, including digital I.O., analog I.O., specialty I.O., and then we're going to spend some time reviewing each Horner I.O. product line. And as always, we'll finish with a live Q&A session. Now on the very basic side of things, let's start with digital inputs and digital outputs. These provide binary status and control for a variety of devices. On the input side, we're talking about photo eyes, limit switches, push buttons, etc. And on the output side, we're talking about motor starters, solenoids, pilot lights, etc. Over the years, safety directives have steered most systems to DC voltages. 0 to 60 volts DC is considered low voltage and is considered the safest. The most common voltage used in factory automation is 24 volts DC. 12 volts is the most common in mobile applications, and there are also applications for 5 volts and 48 volts, which we won't cover today. AC is much rarer nowadays from the standpoint of control voltages. 24 volt AC is used in some highly distributed systems where there's concern about voltage drop, and they want to use 24 volts AC. 120 volts AC is mostly limited to machine retrofits. Relay outputs are very popular today, because you can drive either AC loads or DC loads with those particular devices. Now from the standpoint of wiring those, there's two different approaches for digital ends. You've got positive logic, where you run the positive lead through the switch and into the input module, or negative logic, where you run the negative lead through the switch and into the input module. There are also some subtle differences in wiring, depending on whether the inputs are isolated or non-isolated. The Horner built-in I.O. that's built into the OCS is typically non-isolated. For our remote I.O. products, they're almost always isolated, so the main difference there is what you do with common. In the case of non-isolated inputs, you're just running your signal from common into the switch. For isolated inputs, you're actually going to connect the plus lead from your power supply to the common. Typical voltage thresholds for our products are on above 8 volts and off below 3 volts. On the digital output side, there are two different approaches. You've got positive logic, where you're providing the positive voltage to the actuator, and then the actuator is connected externally to common. With negative logic, it's the opposite. The output module is providing the negative lead, and the positive lead is coming externally. Our designs at Horner primarily support positive logic. For our positive logic outputs on the Horner designs, whether that's built-in or remote I.O., the current capacity is almost always about half an amp. Let's take a look at relay outputs. These can switch either the supply voltage or the common signal. They're usable with both positive logic and negative logic type systems, and they have higher current carrying capacity. In exchange for that, they have a limited mechanical life not suited for high duty cycle applications. On the analog side, we're talking about integer control or integer status depending on whether it's an input or an output. For example, for inputs, there's pressure transmitters, temperature sensors, etc. For outputs, you could be supplying a speed signal to a variable frequency drive. There are many different signal types for analog inputs and outputs. The general purpose ones are typically 4 to 20 milliamps or 0 to 10 volts. Sometimes you'll see plus or minus 10 volts, but not very often. There are many supported temperature sensors, including thermocouples, RTDs, and thermistors. There are also load cell or strain gauge type inputs that can also be used with some of our I.O. products. Although we don't at this stage have a dedicated load cell or strain gauge input. There are important terms we need to know with analog. Resolution is how finely can we resolve the signal on an input as we convert it from analog to digital and vice versa. It's often expressed in terms of a number of bits. Examples are 10-bit resolution, which is 1 in 1024, all the way up to 16 bits of resolution, which is about 1 in 65,000. The higher the number of bits, 
the more finely you can resolve that analog signal coming in. Sometimes resolution is expressed in AD converter resolution. Maybe a 16-bit or 12-bit AD converter is used. However, the usable resolution passed on to the application is not always the full capability of the A to D converter. Maybe you've got noise or instability issues and there's a round off. So sometimes you receive less in terms of resolution than the A to D converter should deliver. Accuracy is how closely the converted value matches the real value. With scaling, we're talking about the min and max digital values that are corresponding to the min and max analog values. And repeatability is the consistency of the conversions. It does not have absolute accuracy. From a general purpose standpoint, 4 to 20 milliamps is still the most popular. It's the most noise immune because current is less susceptible to noises than voltages. It's not as susceptible to voltage drop either. From a power standpoint, some 4 to 20 milliamp transmitters or sensors are self-powered. Others require external loop power. We support both with our products. 0 to 10 volts is also very common. Plus or minus 10 volts is also supported in some cases. Most Horner products support both general purpose signals, 4 to 20 and 0 to 10 volts. The Micro OCS series supports only 4 to 20 milliamps as it's the most popular. All right. Let's take a look at temperature sensors starting with thermocouples. Thermocouples are traditionally the most popular temperature sensor, although they're not as frequently used today as they once were. They're the best fit for high temperature applications. They can work at thousands of degrees. They work based on the material properties of metals. So when you take two different metals and you join them at a point called the hot junction, voltage is generated that varies with temperature. The metal combination used in the sensor will define the type of sensor, for example type J, type K, or type T. When you use thermocouples, you have to use special thermocouple extension wire. You also have to have a temperature sensor built into the circuit board, where the thermocouple wire plugs into the OCS or the remote I.O. This is because you're going to have voltage loss that must be predicted and accounted for. Thermocouple measurement can be a little bit complicated. A further complication is that thermocouples might be either grounded or ungrounded at the tip. Some I.O. modules will only support ungrounded sensors, while others will support both. Let's talk about RTDs next. They're very cost effective and can be used at temperature ranges between minus 200 degrees Celsius and plus 800 degrees Celsius. Their resistance varies with temperature. They're typically named based on their material and what the resistance value is at zero degrees. So a PT100 is a platinum resistor, where the resistance value of that sensor is 100 ohms at 0 Celsius. There's no special wiring required really, although you do need to connect at least three wires to the sensor, so the resistance of the lead wire can be measured and compensated. Now let's talk about thermistors. With thermistors, resistance also varies with temperature, but they're cheaper, less accurate, and typically have higher resistance values. Let's talk about strain gauge and load cell type sensors. They measure strain or load, typically used in weighing applications. Now from the diagram on the screen, what you're really looking at is a Wheatstone bridge. So you have an input voltage called an excitation voltage. The load cell has a gain associated with it, which is typically expressed in millivolts per volt, and then it has an output from the bridge, which is what is measured. The full scale output is the gain of the load cell times the excitation voltage, and that excitation voltage is typically around 10 volts. It needs to be steady, because if it varies, then the output will vary. High resolution is almost always required because you're usually using low voltage levels. High speed is sometimes required, depending on the application. All right, now that we've covered the different types of IO that are out there, let's talk about the solutions that Horner offers. How do I choose the right IO for the application? It often comes down to preference, but not always. Sometimes you prefer a particular I.O. style. The substantial differences between the specific I.O. solutions that we provide will be highlighted on screen. Sometimes there are special situations, for example, handling AC inputs, which will need a certain I.O. as well. Let's start with built-in I.O. All modern OCS models offer built-in I.O. It is the most cost-effective I.O. option we have, the built-in I.O. for Horner products is specified through the last digit of the part number, so you don't add it in the field. 
you order it with the I.O. complement that you want. And in many applications, especially smaller ones, the built-in I.O. could be all the I.O. you need for the application. Even in larger applications, you can use the built-in I.O. for push buttons, pilot lights on the door, and remote I.O. for everything else. Built-in I.O. updates synchronously with the logic scan, whereas remote I.O. is asynchronous. The built-in I.O. offers excellent high-speed counter capability and high-speed output capability. Now let's talk about the Micro OCS with its built-in I.O. With the Micro OCS, you've got two options. Model A is based around DC I.O., including DC outputs. The Model R is based around DC inputs and relay outputs. There's 30 I.O. points with Model A and 24 with Model R. In many cost-effective applications, you shouldn't need any additional I.O. The inputs are 12 or 24 volt compatible and non-isolated. Eight of the inputs are standard inputs, four of which are high speed, which could be used with high speed counting type applications. The Model A uses 24 volt DC10 output, which is standard 2R high speed. The Model R uses six relays, which are rated for up to three amps, and then two outputs that are solid state. You can do high speed outputs with the Model R using two additional high speed outputs that are not in relay. You've also got four 4 to 20 milliamp inputs and two 4 to 20 milliamp outputs. From the X4 on up, you also have RTD capability. The Model R relays are only UL rated to 60 volts max, with the current rating at 5 amps. You can have up to 3 amps running through on relay, but no more than 5 total amps for the unit. The total number of RTD inputs plus analog outputs cannot exceed 4. The resolution of the analog is 12 bits, so on the 4 to 20 milliamp side, the resolution is about 1 in 4000. Scaling is 0 to 32000. We do that because we have OEMs that might be using lower resolution products on some projects, and higher resolution products on other projects. As the counts change when monitoring the inputs as they come in, they're going to be jumping by a minimum of 8 counts because of the difference between the resolution and the scaling. On the RTD side, we strictly support PT100, and we've got a limited temperature range from minus 50 to plus 250 Celsius. The Micro OCS is designed for cost. It is not our highest quality product, but there are some trade-offs in exchange for great value for money. Let's talk about the built-in I.O. and the XL series. There are six I.O. options. Similar to the Micro series, all the standard signals are available. Digital in, digital out, relay out, analog in, analog out. But not every model has analog out, or supports temperature sensors on the analog input side, but many of them do. Let's start with our most popular model, the Model 2. It is our entry level option, it has 12 digital inputs with positive and negative logic, 6 non isolated relay outputs, and 4 analog inputs. The relays are rated for higher voltages up to 30 volts DC and up to 250 volts AC. It is 3 amps max per point, but no more than 5 amps per unit. The analog inputs are jumper configurable between 0 to 10 volts and 4 to 20 milliamps. We're looking at a 12-bit resolution with this model. All channels are updated with each logic scan. The analog is fast on this unit. Every time you scan, you get a new conversion value in every channel. Accuracy is 1% or better on each channel. We have a standard analog filtering approach that we take with all of our built-in I.O., which is used in some of our remote I.O. as well. It's basically a running average. What that means, as you look at the chart, is that as you get a step change, you can stabilize your signal as a trade-off with response time. So if you're currently at one value of voltage, and it changes to the next, depending on your level of filtering, it will change response time. A level of zero means there is no filtering. The new voltage is this scan and that's what's reported. Level 7 is the highest level of filtering. That means the average rate of the previous readings is given a weight of 7, and the new conversion that just came in during the scan is giving a weight of 1. That will take significantly longer to change than the previous one where there's no filtering. So that's what that digital filtering looks like, and it's published in all of our cut sheets. And then getting back to relays, relays have a limited mechanical life expectancy, so there is a variance in terms of the mechanical life
based on the current that's running through them. Let's talk about Model 6 built-in I.O. This model is also very popular, because it's our best analog model in terms of quantity and quality of the analog signal. The Model 5 is great too, but it does have less analog. I won't be covering the digital inputs here. It has a 17-bit A to D converter with 15-bit user resolution. Channels are updated every 41 milliseconds. Our accuracy is very good, at 0.15%, or a little bit higher in the case of thermocouple sensors. On the analog output side, we've got four analog output channels with 12-bit resolution. The real strength of this product is every analog channel can be independently set for its own sensor type. You can mix and match between thermocouple and voltage and current, setting each channel to what you need. The Model 6 only supports ungrounded thermocouples, but as you can see here, there's a wide variety of sensors that we support. There are a limited number of add-on modules available, including a very popular one we call an XDAC. Under the hood of any XL series product, you can add an extra two or four channels of analog output, which have 12-bit resolution. It's also the best way of adding plus or minus 10 volt capability on the output side to any XL series OCS. Here are some reasons to choose built-in I.O. There are very few situations where you shouldn't spend the extra money on it. An OCS can support all of the I.O. in the application. If you've got push buttons and pilot lights on the door, you can use built-in I.O. alongside remote I.O. If you have high-speed counting or high-speed output requirements, the built-in I.O. is inexpensive and very powerful. And if you need I.O. that is as fast as possible, the built-in I.O. is perfect for you. Now let's talk about remote I.O. All OCS controllers support remote I.O. If you've got a larger application where the built-in I.O. is not sufficient, then you need to add it. In many ways, it's easier to wire because it's mounted on the back plate with an interposing terminal strip. It doesn't require significant wiring on the door. A CAN cable or Ethernet cable is all you should need. Horner offers four different remote I.O. options. C-Scan is our most popular remote I.O. network. It's robust, it's plug and play, and it's inexpensive. It updates asynchronously with the logic scan. However, there are fewer high speed input and output options for remote I.O. systems. Smart Rail I.O. is an elegant, nicely packaged, distributed modular I.O. You can have up to eight modules connected to each base and up to 16 bases on each network. It's the most compact remote I.O. package and it's highly expandable. All the I.O. is backplane isolated. It comes with standard screw type terminal strips and spring clamps are available and inexpensive. There are multiple networks available. C-Scan, Modbus TCP and CanOpen. C-Scan is the most popular and best performing but CanOpen is also very good. The typical update rate you'll get on the input side is somewhere below 20 milliseconds. Usually it's much less than that. As soon as an input changes, the smart rail immediately broadcasts that information and it gets to the OCS in a few milliseconds. We support 12 or 24 volt inputs as well as 12 or 24 volt outputs. These are isolated on the input side. These are typically available with half amp drive capability limited to a couple amps more than that per module. For digital inputs and outputs, you can have 8, 16, or 32 points of density. And then relays are really popular for smart rail, which support high voltage DC and high voltage AC. There are 2 amps per point and 5 amps per common. For a 16 point module, there are actually 2 commons, so there's a higher capability in terms of current there. Now let's talk analog in smart rail. The update rate is typically a little slower in terms of updates. It's around 50 milliseconds. For most analog, that's fast enough. It supports 4 to 20 milliamps and 0 to 10 volts, with a 12-bit resolution scaled at 0 to 4,000. We'll probably add a 0 to 32,000 option in the future, but it's not there yet. On the RTD side, it only supports BT100 sensors. It supports the most popular thermocouple types, J, K, and T, and it also supports R, but there are a variety of other types that aren't supported, so you'd need another I.O. if you have a different thermocouple type, and only ungrounded sensors can be used with smart rail for thermocouple. What are the reasons to choose smart rail? If you have a large amount of I.O., you have a mix of different types of I.O., 
You need more than just the built-in I.O. and you need something compact. Maybe Ethernet I.O. is a better fit for your application. In that case, Smart Rail is a good choice for you. Now let's discuss Smart Block I.O. Each block is standalone and has its own network interface which is only available for C-Scan. This Smart Block is good in applications with high analog density and or high analog accuracy requirements. It has some specialty options as well. It has a high speed counter option. It's technically an RCC model that does high speed counting, but it's in the smart block package. We also have some specialty modules for AC power monitoring, as well as some specialty relay stuff, either really high current or modular. Let's look at analog capabilities with smart block. The update rate is 50 milliseconds. All channels are typical for standard analog. It has high performance, but it is quite slow. It has 6 channels per second as an update rate for thermocouples, which is slow but really accurate. On the RTD side, 16 channels per second. The resolution of the AD converter is either 14 or 16 bits. The resolution we pass to the user is typically 14 or 15 bits, because we use that 16th bit to keep things stable and accurate. Accuracy is 0.1%, and that's conservative. It's much better than that most of the time, and it is isolated from the C-Scan network by at least 300 volts. AC is closer to 500 volts for most models. Why would I choose Smart Block? If you need high performance and high density analog, it's perfect for you. You may need more than four channels of plus or minus 10 volt analog outputs, or you need plus or minus 10 volt analog inputs. Maybe you only need a few digital inputs and outputs that are solid state or relays. The cheapest way to do that is to use a Smart Block DIQ 880 or Smart Block DIQ 881, which will allow you to add a little bit of I.O. to an OCS application for the least amount of money. You may also need more than four channels of high speed counting. The next two products are similar ranges, so I'll cover them a little more quickly. We have Smart Sticks, which has been popular for a long time. It's a distributed barrier strip style of I.O., which only supports C-Scan. It's great in applications for high digital density. There's also a cost-effective way of adding a block of digital I.O. to any XL series OCS. In that case, if you need more than 8 in and 8 out, you're going to use Smart Sticks. Smart Mod is the last range we'll talk about. It's a very simple, cost-effective series that is primarily analog input, but it also has analog output. The interface is over Modbus RS-485, so it'll interface with any of our products. It is the lowest cost way to add a block of analog I.O. to an XL series OCS. Every I.O. series I've talked about up until now has a Class 1 Division 2 hazardous location rating. The Smart Mod is ordinary location only. Choose Smart Mod if you just need to add a few analog channels to a low cost controller. If you need to support AC inputs, we have a signal conditioner, which is an opto isolator that is AC on the input side and DC on the output side. For each AC input that you have, instead of putting a dual height field terminal strip on your DIN rail, you can use this. It can turn any AC signal into a DC input. It is very cost effective and only one is required per AC input. Let's say I need to support grounded thermocouples. We have thermocouple support in a variety of products. The ones that support grounded sensors include the built-in I.O. Model 5. The Model 5 on any of our XL products supports up to two channels per thermocouple, and they can be grounded or ungrounded. Smart Block offers grounded thermocouple support as well. Eight channel or four channel options are available in Smart Block. Some products which don't support grounded thermocouples do support ungrounded thermocouples very well. For those, we've got the built-in I.O. Model 6 the Smart Rail I.O. Thermocouple Module, and the Smart Mod I.O. Thermocouple Module. Thank you for watching today's tutorial. The Q&A session will begin shortly. Okay, that's that. Let's see if we have any questions here. Um, what is the limit on Smart Rail modules? So you can have eight modules to a base, and then you can have up to 16 bases then. 
Um, do we have anything else? I'm not seeing anything else just yet. Um, okay, there's nothing else in just now. Um, I'll take you to the webinar page just to show you. Um, so you should be seeing my screen there now. So we do have the high speed counter review coming up next Thursday. And we will be updating this list with our future webinars in the coming days. So do keep an eye out on that. Um, as always, this, like previous webinars, we'll post, we'll just do a bit of quick edit to them and we'll post them up and you'll have full access to them here on this page. Um, okay, still no questions. So I think that's that. Um, thank you for joining us this morning again, as always. We hope to see you next week and in the following weeks. We will have that list updated soon with the upcoming webinars. And as always, the registration link is right there. You can register for them. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us this morning and uh, have a good day.